Hello, me again. Uh, so, uh, it used to be uh, not so long ago, this is from 2013, this article, that people asked, can you trust open source software if you run it on your computer? Uh, will it do something nasty? Uh, these people call themselves hackers, so how can you trust these people? You don't know what they've put in their code, it might be something malicious. Um, they might be spying on me, uh, they might be wanting to blackmail me like this character from Black Mirror, and I might have to end up being blackmailed and then, and then in a fist fight in the forest to the finish uh, for my very life just because I want to run KD Plasma. And, and this feels like quite a, a nasty thing to say to people, but th that was a genuine worry not so long ago. Uh, fortunately these days people seem to understand that actually the genuine worry is if you run commercial software which has commercial interests um, and companies keep trying to put in stuff which uh, will spy on you and uh, will will try and get some sort of edge to make them an extra little bit of money or um, yeah, get them some data that they can then sell on and that a lot of commercial software will be actively spying on you and you can't stop it um, and and that with a lot of software you will end up with your um, with your files encrypted and blackmailed back to you and you will end up dead which is which is not a good story either um, so people trust open source people trust KDE uh, but there's a long chain between us writing software and then it getting onto people's computers and somewhere along that long chain it can be hacked so uh, people trust that we're not going to put malicious stuff in our code because it's all peer-reviewed and it would be noticed um, and we don't really want to spend hours of our volunteer time only to write something that then breaks into people's computers but hackers will come along and do mess around with our stuff on somewhere on that long chain um, and and well w people might end up in a fist fight to the death in the forest just be because they want to run plasma so there's a long chain of trust that goes between us and it getting onto people's computers um, and we have to make sure that you can verify at every one of those steps that it's not been hacked and you're not, you're not going to be blackmailed, you're not going to end up in that forest uh, in a fist fight to the death. So how do we do at, at dealing with this long chain of trust? Uh, one place that people get our software is by installing it from packages, apt-get and yum and zipper and the rest. And for quite a long time now, most of these have all been digitally signed. So you can authenticate that the package you're downloading and installing on your computer really is the same package that has been uploaded by some developer to their archive. Um, and it's automated, so it's fairly easy. So for a long time, that's been a mostly successful story, apart from a little bit guilty, as the, the judge in Gotham City would say, um, because I screwed up last year when the KDO Neon server wasn't set up properly, and anybody could upload stuff to that server if they knew where to find it. We don't think anybody did know where to find it. We've no reason to think there was a problem. Um, but it, that's an example of the kind of area where issues can come along in this long chain of trust is if you have an incompetent sysadmin like me. Uh, so people will download an ISO to get our software. Um, and these ISOs contain large amounts of code. Um, and they have to make sure that code really does come from us or come from the open source communities that they trust. Um, and typically when you download an ISO, uh, they will come with a GPG signature and typically they will come with a checksum so you can make sure that it hasn't been hacked somewhere along the way. Um, and that's fine, but there's some people who don't quite do best practice according to Judge Dredd and Megacity 1. Um, just picking a random example, uh, Netrunner, which is fine, it's not actually that guilty. I don't think they're going to get Judge Dredd come along and, and slam them up. Um, but they, they have a checksum here. It's a 256 SHA checksum, so it's a decent algorithm, uh, but there's no GPG signature, uh, so you can't be quite as sure release from the release that there's nothing terribly wrong with it. Um, but actually, that's, that's okay, it's just not quite 100% best practice. Uh, this is Kubuntu, and they have a whole load of files, and they've got a whole load of checksums, and I don't quite know why they have three different checksums, so that seems um, overly complex, and if you know anything about security, complexity is the enemy of security. Why you have three checksums when you just could, could have the, the best one rather than the ob obviously older ones? And they have a GPG signature for each of those checksums, so why do they GPG sign the checksum, which contains a checksum for the ISO, uh, rather than just GPG signing the ISO directly? Uh, it's not a bad thing to do, it's just a little bit more complex, a little bit more faffy than it needs to be. Complexity is the enemy of security. 
Uh, so I've written a tool, or I'm in the process of writing a tool, ISO Image Writer, which is a fork of uh, Rosa, or hopefully not a fork, because I'm working with the Rosa developer. Um, and that will automatically check the checksum, the GPG signature for your ISOs that uh, people download. Um, because nobody will actually do that manually. I don't think anybody actually checks the checksum, and I don't think anybody actually checks the GPG signature, so it needs to be done automatically by a program. And, and that means that if you trust that program, then you know you can trust your, your ISO. And of course, that isn't a solution to the problem. It just moves it further upstream, but that's fine because we can, um, we can deal with that single issue uh, case where we, you make sure those packages are valid, and that means you can make sure all the ISOs you want to install are valid. Uh, so we release TARS, um, and that's our, the main output from KDE is TARS for our applications, and um, a lot of those are made with the Release Me tool, which now forces GPG signatures for people who make releases using Release Me. So if you're not releasing, using Release Me, then uh, you're you're not being forced to do the right thing. Uh, but it's okay because frameworks and KDE applications and Caligra and Krita and KDevelop, which don't use Release Me. Um, Nevertheless, we've managed to convince them all to use GPG signatures as well, uh, so we follow good practice there. Um, and for, on the packaging side, because the chain of trust there goes from KD releasing it to distros picking it up, uh, the packaging in Debian and Kubuntu and KD Neon, at least, will automatically verify those GPG signatures. I don't know if that's the case for other distros for other packaging formats, but I hope it is. Is there a person? Do you know? Not sure. Not sure. Hopefully it is. Um, but guilty, according to the Court of Session in Scotland, highest court in the land, we've released, in this year, we've released these tarballs which don't have GPG signatures. So people, <laughs> so people could be downloading this stuff and, and they will end up in the Court of Session, or the release managers will, because all these tarballs get released which don't have GPG signatures. Um, why is that? I have no idea. Um, Sysadmin doesn't require it, and I think sysadmin should require it. Um, they, they probably use obscure scripts. They use their own scripts, which don't GPG sign it. Um, GPG is often quite faffy, and there's some incredibly amazing, intelligent people, such as the Critter Release Manager, who nonetheless gets very frustrated because GPG is um, obscure and faffy to use, um, and well, enemy is the, uh, so complexity is the enemy of security, so a lot of people just don't want to use GPG because it's too faffy, like Frederick had trouble setting up yesterday. Um, but nevertheless, it's what we should all get into using. Um, and for example, well, uh, I'm sorry to pick on Kirigami again because they had it yesterday, but the release page for Kirigami has checksums, which is good, and it uses a good algorithm, so that's nice, and it's got a link to Marco's uh, signature, so that's good. It's, it's all GPG signed, but it's a wiki. So it, if a hacker hacked the tarball, hacker, it's trivial to change the wiki, and, and so there's no security there. Uh, so, uh, oh, this is another guilty party according to this beautiful court with foreign unelected judges in the European Court of Human Rights. Um, Git tags. So can you verify that the code you have on your computer actually goes all the way back to the Git commits from the people that we trust? Um, and it turns out that you can't with, uh, this is kauth, which is frameworks. So for some reason the framework script don't push, they push the tags, so they don't push the signatures to the tags. Um, and the same thing with applications, I think. So, so the chain of trust should go all the way from Git to your install on your computer, and for some reason we don't push a lot of Git tags. And why is this important? Well, that's our, it's our, um, it's our vision for our software. You can't have freedom without privacy, and you can't have privacy without control. And you can't have control without knowing who you trust. They, people trust us. We should make sure that we are successfully take that trust all the way through to the point of installation on people's computers. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Is it time for questions? Maybe one. I have two questions. One is, how is the state of build reproducibility for KDA projects. So, I mean, there is a really huge issue that uh, some distros are tra trying to make builds reproducible, but some software have built-in dates or built-in stuff that every time you build the software changes. 
So how is the state for our projects? And the second thing is, uh, should we move to sign also commits on Git? Uh, build reproducibility, I don't know. I happen not to care about it. Maybe I should care about it, but I'm not sure. Yes, yes, I do care about it. Yes, good. <laughs> Scarlett has a comment? Give, give your microphone to Scarlett. She says she's building, she's working on reproducible builds. We're, we're not as terrible as, as some projects, but we do have some issues. And, oh, should we sign all git commits? Um, I don't think we should. Why? Why? Harold says thumbs up. Is that a, we should? Okay, yes, we should. We should. Yes, absolutely we should. Of course we should. Uh, why wouldn't we? Um, <laughs> yes, another question. No. Uh, Mike's coming down. So why would you want really uh, tarballs to be signed by a GPG signature if you're downloading them from an HTTPS server where you can uh, verify the HTTPS certificate? It's a lot easier to verify an HTTPS certificate. Or, yeah. Right, so uh, our tarballs get put on a, a master server which gets pushed out to a dozen or more different mirrors and any one of those mirrors could be hacked. So even though your HTTPS connection authenticates that yes, you're really talking to the server you think you're talking to, it doesn't mean that server has not been hacked. That server could easily be hacked, and there's dozens of those servers, so chances are one of them will get hacked before too long. And I, would it, I would say that it has, you have the exact same chance of having an HTTPS server, uh, just a download server being hacked as you have of creating a GPG key where the short key collides with another. It, that, well, it doesn't that, matter if the short key collides with the long key because this joke gets the right key. Yeah, so it's. And, and the verification people are packagers. They're not random punters on the street. They're people who should know what they're doing. So packagers should know how to get the correct key. And that's why in your release announcement, you should say exactly where you to get the correct key for um, so that the packagers will get the correct key and not get the wrong key. Okay, I'll continue this. And they should not say on the wiki. You can take this discussion offline. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for the past session track. Um, so we have a 20 minutes break, and we'll start at 16 hour 30. Thank you.